Hello, I showed you how to create a post in WordPress in the previous video. Now, I will guide you how to format and style text in the content editor. Note that if you use classic editor, see our other video of working with text in the classic content editor. Here, I focus on the default Gutenberg content editor of WordPress. For working with text, you should firstly use the Gutenberg's top toolbar, that is located at the top of the screen and contains a handful of options. From left to right, the first button that we come across is the WordPress logo. Clicking on this button will take you out of Gutenberg and back into the WordPress backend. Depending on what you were creating, you will end up in the All Posts, All Pages, or Widgets section. The next button in the top toolbar is the Block Library. When you click on this button, you will see a full list of all available blocks that you can work with. The Block Library consists of two tabs, one for single blocks and one for block patterns. Next, you will see the Tools button. Currently, this option allows you to control what happens when you click on a block with your mouse. You can either start editing the chosen block, or you may simply select the block for bulk editing. The next two buttons are arguably everyone's favorites, the Undo and Redo buttons. You can use those to undo and redo your edits. After the undo and redo buttons, we get an information pop-up. This pop-up will give you an overview of your content such as how many words you have written, how many paragraphs there are, how many blocks you have used, and more. Going with the theme of content overviews, the list view shows you an outline of the various blocks that are currently in use. This can be especially helpful in more complex layouts where blocks are nested inside of other blocks. You can click on an element in the list view to jump to that element in the main content area. If you have used WordPress in the past, you will be familiar with the next three buttons of Save Draft, Preview, and Publish. These allow you to save your changes, see how your content would look like when published, and actually publish your content. Once your content is published, Save Draft will become Switch to Draft and Publish will be replaced by Update. The last two buttons in the top toolbar allow you to toggle the sidebar and to adjust settings related to the Gutenberg editor. For styling text, you can use the styling buttons on the button bar, such as bold or italic. These buttons work as follows. They're toggle switches. That means if some text is in italics, clicking the italic button removes the italics, and vice versa. Highlight the text you want to work with and then click the button to apply the change. I'll demonstrate by working with some of the text in the first post for my website. I want to emphasize the name Kingston in the opening sentence and to italicize the name Bob Marley Museum. I simply highlight the text first and click the corresponding button, just like any word processor. If you prefer working with keyboard shortcuts, those all work also in the content editor. For a complete list of shortcuts, select the three dots button in the right corner of the screen, and then select keyboard shortcuts. Please use bold button wisely. If you use too much bold text on a page, the purpose begins to get lost. Everything becomes important so nothing stands out. Like that. For underlying the text, select your text and click Ctrl plus U. However, in practice, I'm not a fan of using the underline function, at least not on the web. I think it's just too confusing to your visitors, because underline text spells link in their minds. They try clicking the underline text and you either disappoint or confuse them. If you need to emphasize text, it's usually best to stick to bold and italics, or perhaps color. For coloring text, remember a few things before you start using it. Oh don't use the same or a similar color as the one you use for your text links that's going to confuse visitors. Oh if you have of text can also be confusing, though a shade of that color may be okay. Oh you should always think about the background color behind the text. You want enough contrast with the background to keep the text readable. To change the text font color, first, select a block, click the settings icon on the top right, then click on color settings. From here, you can change text color along with the background color. 
Formatting text is another way to help visitors read your content easily, and the button bar offers many formatting options. By formatting, I mean how text is structured, paragraphs, lists, groups of paragraphs separated by headings, alignment, and indenting. There are three alignment buttons of left, center, and right alignment. To use any one of them, simply place your cursor in the paragraph you want to align, and click the appropriate button. You cannot align a single sentence within a paragraph. Also, you can use block quotes for distinguishing blocks of text from regular paragraphs, often with some nice styling. As the name suggests, the most common way to use block quotes is when quoting someone else. Keep in mind that the font styling you see here is based on the default 2014 theme. What you'd see would depend on your theme. One common styling is to indent the left side or even the right side as well. Applying block quotes works only on entire paragraphs. If you try to highlight just one sentence of a paragraph, clicking block quotes would format the entire paragraph. It follows from that you need to place your cursor only somewhere in a paragraph to make it all a block quote. If you want to make more than one paragraph into a block quote, you need to highlight the entire group. Now, let's see one of the most effective ways to present information on the internet that is with the use of lists, because they emphasize points by separating them visually, they allow the eye to scan through material quickly, they provide a roadmap when giving instructions or long explanations and help readers remember points. WordPress makes it easy to create lists with bullets or with numbers, there's a button for each on the button bar. Creating a list is just a matter of selecting the entire group, and clicking one of the list buttons. If you create your list in the content editor, begin by pressing return slash enter after the paragraph and before the point where you want to put in the list. Then click the button of the list type you want. A bullet or number appears, and you can begin writing the first list item. Press return slash enter at the end of the item, and another bullet or number appears. Repeat until you complete the list. When you finish, press return slash enter once. You see a bullet or a number, then press a second time. The bullet or number disappears, meaning the list is complete, and you're on a new line ready to start writing a new paragraph. If you have complex lists with sublevels, WordPress can handle that using the indent buttons in combination with the list function. To create a sub-item, press enter to start a new list item, and then press the increase indent button. The list item moves to the right, and for numbered lists, you see numbering begin again for the new level. For bulleted lists, the bullet for the new level may be the same or different, depending on your theme. The decrease indent button moves a list item to the left, and returns the bullet or number to the type for that level of the list. You can see a new multi-level version of my food list in bulleted form on the left, and using a numbered list on the right. The number of levels you can have is limited only by the width of your content area. Concerning the text paragraph, the default formatting when you enter text in the content editor is a paragraph. Even a single line of text followed by a return creates a paragraph in the technical sense of having HTML paragraph tags. About the only time you need to use the formatting drop-down for paragraphs is when you want to change some text back from some other format. Paragraphs by default are left aligned and their styling is controlled by the theme style sheets. The preformatted is preformatted content, and the idea here is that the text in question has a particular spacing, and the job of this tag is to preserve it. By default, HTML ignores white space and puts a single space between elements. The pre-tag, however, maintains the original white space. Usually the pre-tag displays using a fixed width font, such as courier, the typewriter font, and sometimes without any word wrap function. Coupled with the ability to maintain the original white space, the tag is often used for displaying computer code, though there is a specific HTML tag called code for that purpose. In practice, 
The reason your theme styles each heading differently is to help visitors see the relationships between headings. The numbers 1 through 6 are derived from the HTML tags H1, H2, and so on. Heading 1 is meant to be the most important on a page, or as of HTML5, the most important within an HTML section. Heading 2 is less important, and so on down the line. And the term heading is also important here. It means a word or short phrase. A series of two sentences is not a heading. Headings introduce and mark out groups of paragraphs and other content. I finish here the video, for more format options, please install and use Advanced Editor Tools plugin in other video, if you are familiar with Classic Editor, please install Classic Editor plugin, and see other video of working with text in Classic Editor. Thanks and see you soon in the next videos.